I want to remind everybody that two days ago, Donald Trump dressed up like a garbage collector and rode around in a MAGA garbage truck. And since then, Dark Brandon, a.k.a. Joe Biden, um, occupies so much real estate in the MAGA faithful that they all are wearing trash bags <laughs> and posting it. And the fuck Joe Biden crowd is the most thin skinned people on the planet. But this is just the surface stuff with them. Beneath the surface, we all know the rhetoric and the language and the executive orders that are prepared by Project 2025 that are ready. And Trump has no discipline. And so everything slips out all the time. Pumps, listen to this clip from last night. And I don't blame him for sticking with his daughter, but his daughter is a very dumb individual, very dumb. <laughs> She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. That is insane. That is so threatening and vile. And the people are clapping for it. They yeah. like it. It's unbelievable that he would speak that way four days from the election. But obviously, he has reason to believe that MAGA loves that shit. No, well, he likes it, too. I mean, oh, he is, absolutely loves it. This is his revenge tour. You know, the, the, his, if he were to win again, it is, it is dark, deep, revenge-seeking, autocratic administration. And I just think that his language towards uh, Millie, Kelly, Jack Smith, now Liz Cheney, it always goes back to um, some sort of really perverted justice that he and his followers want to seek. Now, in this clip, he's trying to say that Liz Cheney and her father, Dick Cheney, are huge war hawks. And how would they like it if they had guns facing them? So if Barack Obama or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris use this kind of language about um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, about Donald Trump, about Don Jr., they would lose their minds. They would. And I just go back to, wasn't it the first rally he had at the site of the Waco standoff that he actually said, I am your retribution? And now he's telling us to whom he seeks retribution retribution against. This scares me. Like these are threats. People need to get up and realize this guy is completely mentally ill, unstable, and full of rage. Well, the problem is, again, Donald Trump in solitary can say a bunch of crazy right. things. He is surrounded by a group of people that want no guardrails on democracy. They want to post constitutional America. They seek to imprison journalists. They seek to um, charge physicians and women seeking abortion care with crimes. They seek to roll back any sort of discrimination protections. Right now, there's a whole movement on Elon Musk's X platform where they want to do away with the female right to vote. And I think it was just a couple of days ago was 50 years ago to the day that women could get a credit card without their husband's signature. And in right wing Christian nationalist circles, they're all talking about women need to vote the way their husband tells them to. That's the right. Bible says that women are supposed to submit. Nobody is safe in this administration, they seek to dismantle the Department of Education and what that will do to rural areas and rural communities is just leveling to think about. But there's so many different facets of the MAGA movement that you can go down and it's a heaping pile of shit. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court, you can just kind of deep dive in there for a little bit and you're like, God, that's fucked. These people are insane. And then you can go over to the Heritage Foundation and then you're like, Jesus Christ, these people are nuts. And then you can start diving into the people that work on Trump's campaign. There's so many pockets of just depravity surrounding this man. It takes us back to why are people bending themselves morally 
to vote for this man. And I've said it once and I'll say it again. It's the racism, stupid. Racism, rage, patriarchy. It becomes clearer and clearer to me every day that what they seek is power and control over everyone. White men want control over everybody else. Christian nationalism. There is nothing grosser and more craven than the things they are spewing at rallies on Twitter. It's these people are vile. Next up, we have a clip from uh, the exact same interview with Tucker Carlson. And here is Trump again talking about crowd size. Now, this was an opportunity for him to sit down and talk about policy. He can't. First, he talks about, you know, rifles aiming at Liz Cheney. Now we're going to talk about crowd size. Never been rallies like this. When that sleazebag said during the debate, she said, oh, your rallies aren't well attended and people leave. They don't leave and they're really well intended. We can't get places big enough. And then, and then I said, I said, I said, no, no, you know, the rallies are the biggest in history. We never have it just like this. This is a part of a rally. We never had an empty seat and nobody leaves early. And you know what? If I saw people leaving, you know what I do? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make America great again. Goodbye, everybody. And everybody would be happy. Nobody would leave. But we don't have to do that. Nobody leaves. It's be, it's a love fest. It's never happened before. Why in the fuck four days before the election is he going on and on about crowd size? Because he is so insecure. Objectable facts prove he his people leave and the crowds are smaller and smaller. Why he can't just avoid this topic and talk about something that matters to the American people? I mean, I know there might be a ton of single issue crowd size voters. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure there are problems in the economy, inflation, all that, that people would like to see a reasonable policy argument from him. But all he can talk about is crowd size because his dick is so little. He can't talk about anything regarding the economy because every economist and even his benefactor, Elon Musk, yes. has stated that these policies are going to be devastating for the American economy. He can't talk about it because all of the facts line up that this is going to be devastating. Aside from being a massive human rights and moral issue to round up immigrants and deport them, put them in camps, all of this crazy mean stuff they talk about, removing that labor force from our economy, it will turn upside down. But in his closing argument, aside from dressing up like a trash man and riding around in a MAGA garbage truck and talking about crowd size, he also has an imaginary competition with the deceased former president Ronald Reagan about crowd <laughs> sizes. Listen to this. They're going to have 250 or 300 people. If Ronald Reagan came back from the dead at the height, at the height of Ronald Reagan, if he went to California to have a rally, he'd have 250, 300 people in a ballroom someplace. We have 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000 people. And, and in all fairness, we're late. I don't know. I have no idea. I've been doing this all day. I have no idea how, what time it is. But I know it's not exactly prime time for doing this stuff. Okay. It's obvious that this man is a useful idiot. Absolutely. There are people surrounding him that have very dangerous, ambitious goals. They also control the media. You have Elon Musk that controls X. You have Rupert Murdoch that controls Fox. You have uh, the Daily Wire, you know, controlled by all of those far right wingers. I feel like they are trotting him out because he has the cult following, right. which tells a lot about the American public, but I digress. What their intentions are is to consolidate power. And once they get it, they can start pumping out the propaganda against Trump internally within mm -hmm. the right wing. And they have positioned a young, sociopathic J.D. Vance waiting in the wings because there's no way these people surrounding him 
listen to this crap and think, oh, yeah, this is a great closing argument. Let's have an imaginary crowd size war with Ronald Reagan. <laughs> you know, nobody nobody thinks, yeah, dress up like a garbage man and drive a, a MAGA garbage truck in circles in an empty parking lot. That's what Americans want. Nobody thinks a billionaire cosplaying being a garbage man or cosplaying working at McDonald's makes him relatable. But there are thousands of people funding this, and they have written policy, and they own a lot of the right-wing media, and that is the scariest component of this. It really is. When you first started saying this, and I will give you credit, you started saying it weeks before I heard other people started saying it, about invoking the 25th Amendment against him because he is so frail. He is so morally unfit, mentally compromised. You could tell by when he was trying to get on his garbage truck, he couldn't control his limbs. So he I damn near killed himself it, trying to get in that thing. He looked like he was on roller skates. I mean, it, it was just like a mini stroke in action. <laughs> no disrespect to anybody who suffered from mini strokes. But it, it they have to do a few things in order to do that. They will have to turn the media, the right wing That's media right. industrial complex against him. And if you think back after January 6th, there was a moment where Fox and the right wing started saying, we're done with Trump. And they trotted out DeSantis. Remember, he was the guy that the was going to come in and DeSantis was the new face of the MAGA movement. Well, Kitten Hill's well, you know, with his little booster shoe, spectacularly face planted because this cult was still so embedded. They will start the movement within and then we are beyond fucked. And if you it's so crazy to think when you see Trump and how evil and depraved he is, that the people behind him are more organized right. and more competent in their depravity and they are not um, hindered by imaginary battles with <laughs> Ronald Reagan about crowd size and if people leave the rally early or not, they just know, OK, his followers lap this up. Let's have everything locked and loaded and ready. And they're going to start firing out the shoot. And it's a lot of these people that are going to vote for him don't realize the implications of what his, how his policies are going to affect them the most. And it's horrifying when you think about the J.D. Vance's and that sociopath, Kevin Roberts, yeah. over at the Heritage Foundation, what they have in store for America. It's not just women. It's marginalized groups. It's black, brown, LGBTQ, anybody. Just here, let's just put, say this. Everybody is on the chopping block that's not a white Christian male, full stop. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you because if you're poor and you're a white Christian male. Oh, that's right. Tough shit. You're right. Rich white Christian male. That's your top four. And once they get past that, I don't think they're going to give two shits about the Christian that much. No, I think you're right. I don't think they really give a shit about right. religion. They right. just know it's a vehicle. Right. All right, guys. Some, another uplifting episode from the ladies of Hip News, and we'll see you guys later today. It's so... Uh...